Hey guys, it's Cameron again, and I am back to do a top five favorite books of 2012 video. Um, the books I'm going to show you are in no particular order. They're just simply my top five favorite books that I read last year. Um, the first book is Kiss of the Spider Woman by Manuel Puig. I had to read this for my literature class last year for college, and I've been wanting to read this book before then, ever since I had seen a documentary on the author and Ever since I'd seen that documentary, I've been wanting to read the book and see the movie. Um, I haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm definitely going to check it out now that I've read this book because this was an amazing book. Um, it's very original. It's told almost completely through dialogue. And it doesn't even say this character said this or that character said that. It's just the lines of dialogue um, with like a dash and you, then you read the dialogue. It doesn't say who said what. Um, so it kind of places you in the middle of the story and in the middle of what's going on and uh, you have to figure out for yourself who's saying what and what exactly is going on. Um, and um, it, it seems like that could be pretty confusing, but after a couple pages you get in the swing of it, um, you get to know the characters a bit, and um, once, once you do get to know the characters, um, figuring out who's saying what is really easy because that's really the amazing part of the book is that you can learn so much about these characters just through what they're saying and whenever a certain character is saying something it's really easy to tell that it's that certain character that's saying it because you know the characters so well you get so attached to them and um, that's really that's really the great thing about this book um, uh, it, it also takes it well it takes place in a Argentinian prison um, and the two characters the two main characters are Molina and Valentin and they are cellmates um, and the whole book is basically them talking to each other sharing stories and um, the one character Molina is really into classic cinema and I am a huge classic film buff I love old movies and it was really cool reading about a character who was as passionate about old movies like I am um, so that was really cool getting to read um, about the movies he'd seen and um, uh, he even talks about a couple movies that I know of like the cat people a classic movie um, that I love so it was uh, cool reading about him talking about it and sh him showing his passion for these movies um, because the author himself was um, really into movies and everything so that was really cool um, the story itself I think is great a lot of people say that there's hardly a plot line to this book, but I disagree. I think there is a really, um, a really big plot line to it, um, a really big backstory um, that really starts to take place toward the end of the book. Um, until then, it's mostly just these two characters uh, forming a, a relationship, a friendship with each other, and um, and that's really the heart of the book. Um, and uh, I loved it. I thought it was great, and I definitely recommend it. Um, it's not young adult or anything. Obviously, it's it's an adult book. So, um, if you're into YA and you're not interested in reading adult, um, I wouldn't recommend it to you. But if you're interested in reading something a little bit different, definitely check this book out. Uh, another book that I read last year that I thought was amazing was *The Devouring* by Simon Holt. I've been wanting to read this book for a really long time. Um, I just thought um, I'd seen a ton of reviews and I thought it sounded great. Um, the cover. Uh, it was it had always thrown me off. Um, it kind of looked like just about every other YA book that's on the shelves, so I'd always pass it up and uh, never really gave it another look until I had seen uh, the Readables review of the book, and she said it was great, and I always trust her judgment. And um, then I saw the UK cover, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I gotta read this book. And if you have not seen that cover, go to Google. Type in The Devouring by Simon Holt, UK cover. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. This is straight up horror, and I am a huge horror buff. I love horror. And this was, this is like the ultimate YA horror book, in my opinion. Um, it's really great. Uh, it's, 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 it's got its very chilling moments. It takes a lot to scare me. Um, and I really wasn't scared during this book, but there are some parts in it where it, it can be it can be pretty darn creepy and uh, if you get creeped out real easily I probably wouldn't recommend it but if you want a good horror book this is the one to check out um, it's just a very creepy book and um, 
it's it's pretty original too. Uh, a lot of horror tends to be pretty cliched, but this is it's 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 fairly original and um, it's got a great story, great characters. It's got a really good writing style and it's really thin, so it's not going to take you long to get through. Uh, I definitely definitely recommend this book. Um, I'll, I'm going to read the back of it. They have a poem on the back that kind of gives you the feel of what this book is really like. It says. When dark creeps in and eats the light, bury your fears on sorry night, for in the winter's blackest hours comes the feasting of the vowers. No one can see it, the life they stole, your body's here, but not your soul. It's pretty awesome. I definitely recommend it. Also, I love books that take place in either carnivals or circuses. I love any kind of book that has anything to do with a carnival or a circus, a traveling circus, anything like that. And this has um, a part toward the middle of the book that it, it takes place in a carnival and it's really awesome, uh, very creepy. That's definitely where the book starts getting really kind of messed up, but it, it's, it's a good kind of messed up. And I think you guys will really like it if you check it out. Uh, it's just really awesome. So it's The Devouring by Simon Holt. The next book I read, and this is this is probably my favorite book of all time um, now, or at least one of them, and that is *The Fault in Our Stars* by John Green. Of course, this book is uh, this book's beautiful. It's absolutely just beautiful writing, and I loved every second of this book. Um, I don't think I have to talk much about this because everyone knows it so far already. Um, it's an amazing book. It's absolutely incredible. Um, that's really all I can say about it. Uh, I I will say I don't cry in books. I've never cried in a book before, but this book I was bawling. I was really crying, and uh, that's never happened to me. So, if a book can make me cry, you know this is a book full of feels. So, if you want a book that's just really gonna make you feel something, and you're gonna you want a book that you're really gonna connect to. This is it. This is the book right here. Amazing. And I cannot wait for John Green's next book. He's just a great author. So that's The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. And the next book is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. You guys know this book. Uh, I wish I had read this before last year. I wish I, I wanted to read it when it first came out before it had any hype at all. I had just seen it in the store and I'm like, ooh, I want to read that. But I never got around to it. And then next thing I know, it's like one of the biggest, biggest things of all time. And I was like the only one who hadn't read it. So finally got around to picking it up. and It was amazing. I, I love this book and I love the movie and I cannot wait for Catching Fire to come out. And it was just amazing. I don't have to say anything else about this one either. It was just fantastic. Just fantastic. And then, of course, I read Catching Fire. After that, I had to read it. Um, I thought it was just as good as the first one. Um, I do like the first one a little better, but this really, really holds up well next to the first one. Uh, and that's saying a lot, because the first one is amazing. Uh, I'm so excited for the movie of this. You don't even know. I am so excited. Um, I haven't read Catching Fire yet. Or uh, Catching Fire. This is Catching Fire. I haven't read Mockingjay yet. Um, why haven't I? I have a lot of other books I needed to read and review, and plus college is starting up. Um, so hopefully I can get around to that within the next few months. I have to, because I have to find out what happens. Um, it's killing me, but this was great, and I cannot wait to read Mockingjay, and I cannot wait for the movie of this. <sighs> I'm so excited. Uh, if you have not read The Hunger Games yet, if, you're not, have you, if you haven't read the series, just do it, because it is a book that lives up to the hype and that's really rare usually books get hyped up so much that that they, they just don't live up because you get your hopes up too high and then you read it and you're like well that wasn't as good as I thought it would be this series really lives up I promise you that I know there, there probably have been a few people who, who've read it who didn't like it but it's it's really good and um, it, I really recommend that you give it a chance it's no Twilight trust me it's no Twilight um, so definitely read The Hunger Games series by Suzanne Collins. You'll not regret it. And 
that's all for this video. That's my top five favorite books of 2012. Um, hope you guys had a great reading layer, a year last year, and uh, hopefully everybody has a great reading year this year, 2013. Um, that's all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you guys later. Bye.